Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Rohan and I'm a student pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Data Science and Artificial Intelligence here in NTU. And I'll be talking about my final year project, which was an interdisciplinary project done with the Asian School of Environment titled the 3D Surface Analysis of Coral Microatolls. Let's jump into what they actually are. So what are coral microatolls? They're basically coral colonies with living outer margins, but flat and dead upper surface surfaces. So basically these are coral structures whose upward growth is, is restricted by the sea level. And when they're exposed to the air for a long period of time, they're affected by what are known as die downs uh, in which the upper part of the coral actually dies, but there is still lateral growth. This leads to a characteristic surface level feature on these corals known as, which can be seen in the form of concentric rings, uh, which are separated by die downs. And since their upward growth is bound by sea level, they respond to sea level changes for a long period of time for, for actually decades to centuries. So what is the problem? Uh, so when we try to study these corals, we typically use a method called slabbing in which the, cut, the coral is actually physically cut open as can be seen in this picture and then x-rayed and then it's uh, the different rings and bands are analyzed in that form. The problems are that it's destructive. It actually, you have to cut it open. It's not scalable and it's also pretty expensive to do. Now, we know that uh, it is known that two corals responding to the same sea level uh, will have similar surface morphologies or characteristics. Can we really quantify this understanding via our understanding of the coral surface? This leads us to the main question that we're trying to look at, uh, which is, are two corals responding to the same sea level history? So how do we tackle this problem? We, tried, we do a two-pronged approach in which we try to get a good mathematical understanding of the coral surface. And uh, uh, this is done using the LIDAR scans of the coral surface, as can be seen in this picture, uh, which we, we have collected. And we also use a mesh convolutional autoencoder to create the representative surface patch embeddings. And we'll see towards the end how this actually ties into actually answering our initial problem. So uh, broadly talking about the mathematical analysis, we do, uh, we basically get uh, gradients of the radial profiles of the corals as seen from the LIDAR scans. And this allows us to uh, compare the local minima and maxima, which are the peaks and valleys of two different profiles and conduct analysis. Secondly, we also uh, do compute Gaussian and mean curvature of the entire coral surface. And the point of these and how this, this will tie into the model we build further down the line is that these can act as smoother features that the mesh autoencoder can actually take and work with. Now let's talk about the mesh autoencoder, right? Uh, the, here, the, the main problem is that we can't directly apply convolutions to non-Euclidean data such as meshes. So what we do first is actually uh, uh, through a process of simplification and subdivision, actually create a semi-regular mesh as can be seen from these uh, diagrams. Uh, so the final subdivided mesh is a semi-regular mesh. And the point of semi-regular mesh is that it is locally regular, which allow, which means that it has a constant vertex degree and we can actually perform convolutions because it is locally regular, right? And so what we do is we actually uh, sample the surface of this subdivided mesh uh, and create padded patches which we feed, in, feed into an, uh, an autoencoder, uh, which performs hexagonal convolutions uh, in, uh, in the encoding and decoding process. This is the uh, base overall flow. So we take the mesh uh, after, the, after making it a semi-regular mesh, we generate the patches. And once we train, we actually get the uh, representative embeddings for the uh, patches that we have learned through the latent space of the autoencoder and compare distances between these embeddings on the surface of the coral itself. So the results look something like this, where the green patch is the query patch and the top 20 patches are highlighted in red on the coral surface itself. The aim for this is what we will actually see in the following few slides and how this actually ties in together with everything. So this is an important part. I want to talk about move, what we do move with this moving forward because that is very important, right? Uh, 
the, the important thing about this project is that once we fully understand the how to characterize different regions of the coral surface, which is what we uh, aim to do in this part, we can group the different patches that we see together to study more global regions and features. For example, an entire ring of the coral can be, uh, the patches for that can, uh, the embeddings for the patches for that part can be compared to the uh, to other corals and the same coral as well. Then another thing that we want to do is actually train the model to learn patch embeddings for a data set with a larger number of corals. This was a slight limitation in this project because in this project, uh, we actually uh, went for field work in different sites in Singapore, and we were only able to collect so many LIDAR scans of corals. And the, being uh, the field of machine learning, this could ob obviously benefit for, uh, from a larger amount of data samples, which we plan to do in the future. Secondly, we plan to, uh, once we have a good characterization of the coral surface in, form of, in the form of these embeddings, each coral is actually has an associated with it a regional sea level record which it tracks and uh, we will know this information from corals that are already slabbed and we have the surface lidar scans of them so the main aim is that we want to compare the regional sea level history uh, regional sea level history records of two corals through the surface embeddings and thus uh, aim to find a relation between the re uh, regional sea level record and the different surface features on the surface of the coral itself. So this is an important step in our journey moving forward. Uh, so yeah, once we learn the relations uh, between the regional sea level history records through just the surface representations of the coral, we want to uh, eventually apply this to the to corals for which we do not have regional sea level history records and actually aim to do a broader, larger and more applicable uh, surface analysis of corals for in regions where slabbing is simply impossible or not allowed or basically too expensive to carry out on a large scale for multiple corals. And this would actually lead us to answering the question, are the two corals responding to the same sea level history? So this is this has been my FYP and uh, it's been pretty fulfilling and uh, uh, yeah we aim to work towards this uh, this goal and uh, thank you for listening